Welcome back to your free Windows 7 training. In the last video we looked at capturing a Windows 7 install to a WIM file to use as a reference image. This works well until a new update is released or you need to add an additional driver. Traditionally with older imaging software you would apply the image to a computer, make your changes and after you have finished capture the image again. It took 40 minutes for the image to be captured in the previous video. By the time you deploy the image, make a small change and capture the image, the whole process will easily take over an hour. To solve this problem, Microsoft has created the DSIM tool. This stands for Deployment Image Services and Management Tool. Using this tool you can apply updates including additional software and device drivers. By keeping your images up to date, you remove the vulnerability period when an image is deployed. When you create an image, you may be using the image for months, maybe even years. You may get updates off the network when you deploy the image. However, during the period while the computer is downloading and installing updates from the network, it is vulnerable to attack. When you start capturing images, you want to give some thought about the type of images you want to create. A thick image contains all the software, drivers, and updates that the user needs. These images are bigger and harder to maintain. Each time a new update comes out, you need to apply it to the image. Since the images are larger, they take longer to deploy and take up more disk space. The next type of image is thin image. These images contain the basic operating system and features. No software is installed on these images. When the image is deployed, software is installed from the network. The last type is a hybrid image. Hybrid images are somewhere between a thick and thin image. For example, in a hybrid image, software is installed on its first run. For example, when a user attempts to open a Word document, this would trigger Microsoft Office to be installed. This does mean the user will have to wait for the software to be installed before they can start using it. When thinking about what type of image you want, Consider the size of the image and also the time taken to apply updates and install software that is not on the image after it is deployed. Now let's have a look at how to use the DSIM command line tool. Before I start using the tool, I'm going to add a directory to the environmental variable path. This will make sure that when I run the tool, Windows can find it. If you have the Windows AIK installed on the computer, you can run the Deployment Tools command prompt from the Start menu and this step will be done for you. The first thing I need to do is find out the index number for the image I want to modify. Remember that one WIM file can contain many different images. To do this, I run the command DISM with the switch get-wim-info. Next, I need to specify the file location with the WIM file switch to select an image. In this WIM file there are two images. Both are Windows 7 Ultimate but one is for 32-bit and the other is for 64-bit. Before I can make changes to an image I need to mount it. To mount the image I use the switch Mount-WIM. Next I need to enter in the file name of the WIM file and finally the index. In this case I want the 64-bit image so I will enter in the index number of 2. You could also enter in the image name here but it is generally easier to enter the index number. Finally you need to enter in the switch mount dir. This will allow you to select a directory in which the image will be accessible. Once the image is mounted you can access it with Windows Explorer. If I open Windows Explorer in the root directory of the C drive you will see the directory mount. This is a directory I created to which to mount WIM images. If I open the directory, you will see the files in the WIM image. If I open Users and then go into the directory default and then the folder Desktop, I can add whatever files I want to be on the default user's desktop. Whenever a new user gets created on this system, the default user profile is copied. Mounting images makes it very easy to make changes. If I now go back to my command prompt, the next thing I want to do is add a driver to my image. In this example, 
I will add a network driver. When you install Windows 7, you want as a minimum for the system to have a network driver so that it can access other software on the network. To add a driver, first I need to enter in the switch image and then select the path where I mounted the image. Next, I need to use the add-driver switch and finally the driver switch with the full path to the INF file for the driver. The driver will now be added to the WIM file. The next thing I want to do is add software to the install image. The only software that DSIM supports is MSU and CAB files. Unfortunately, MSI packages are not supported. Having said that, some packages may not work when you attempt to add them. It is just a matter of trial and error. In this case, I will add a Windows update. First, I need to specify the mount directory with the image switch. In some cases, the tool may need some extra space to work with. You can specify a temporary directory to use with the switch scratch directory. Next, you need to use the add-package switch and finally the switch package path. There is no space between the colon at the end of the switch and the file name and sometimes these file names and path are quite long. One trick I like to use to make it easier is to add a space in here and then start typing in the path. I can then type in a couple of letters of the path and press tab. Windows will scan the directory for a match and fill in the rest for me. You can see this file name is quite hard to type in, so typing it in manually would have been difficult. All I need to do now is cursor back and remove the extra space and run the command. The Windows update will now be added to the file. The last step I need to do is unmount the image. I can do this with the unmount-wim switch. Next, I need to specify the mount directory with the mount dir switch. The last option I need to add is the commit switch or discard switch. In this case, I will commit the changes and they will be saved. If I use the discard switch, the changes would be lost and the WIM would be left unchanged. Now that you know how to capture a WIM file and perform maintenance on it, in the next video, I will look at deploying a WIM image to a computer.